Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start today's uh, webinar. Today, we will talk about uh, our initiation on Ezion Holdings, as well as the coming results update on China Error by Water and QMN Dental. So last week, uh, we initiated coverage on Ezion Holdings Limited. So from the title, you can see that um, the title is um, Darkness Before Dawn. You can tell that uh, we are positive on the outlook of Ezion uh, moving forward. Sorry about the uh, technical glitch. Uh, we will stop uh, for a while and we will continue in a minute. Thanks. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh. We continue. So uh, now let's look at the company snapshot. Uh, Eason's last close price was uh, around 31 cents on last Friday, and in, we initiated a buy call with the target price of uh, 48 cents, and we forecast uh, the next year's dividend uh, could be 0.1 cents, uh, which is quite trivial. Uh, so the 50 week range uh, from 21 cents to 61 cents. Uh, here is the price chart compared with the uh, SDI index. Uh, you can see that uh, Ezion uh, actually job uh, underperformed the overall market. Uh, the next is the company background. So uh, basically, uh, Ezion is the uh, offshore and marine assets and facilities owner, such as uh, service rigs, mopools, and lift boats, and it is engaged in chartering of uh, this access to the uh, oil majors and rig operators. Its global footprint extended to Asia Pacific, Middle East, West Africa, North Sea, and um, North and Latin Americas. So as we mentioned, its major customers are the oil majors such as uh, Chevron, uh, Saudi Aramco, and Shell. So in the current years, uh, it has uh, entered the offshore wind sector in Europe and China. The latest update was that in 
the middle of this year, Eason has uh, announced to form the JV with two state-owned companies in China to develop uh, offshore wind uh, market in China collectively. Uh, the next is the uh, investment thesis. So we will discuss about the uh, oil price outlook and the uh, impact uh, of uh, low oil price to the uh, companies in terms of KPEX and OPEX. And lastly, we will discuss about the outlook of uh, offshore wind market. Now let's uh, look at the oil market outlook. So uh, according to November OPEC uh, monthly oil market report, it is forecasted that uh, the gap between global oil demand and the non-OPEC supply will be uh, 32.69 million barrels per day in next year. So in December uh, this year, OPEC announced that they will cap the output range from 32.5 million barrels per day to 33 million barrels per day. And the details will be elaborate in late of this month uh, on the OPEC meeting. So if they fail, if the results come out to be above uh, this level, uh, that means uh, the supply glut will continue in next year. As from the EIA's November short-term energy outlook, it forecasts that uh, the excessive uh, crude oil supply will continue until the fourth quarter of next year. As you can see that the blue line here is the world production, or the brown line here is the world consumption, and the gap between uh, the supply and demand is shrinking. So uh, it is estimated that in the fourth quarter, two lines will be overlap. So, uh, which means that the implied uh, oil stock will be about, will be close to zero. This is the uh, World Bank's commodity markets outlook. Uh, it forecasts the oil price will slowly climb up uh, moving forward. So, in the ne in next year, the crude oil, the average crude, spot crude oil is estimated to be 50, $55 per barrel and only uh, nine years from now it will climb up back to above $80 per barrel. Uh, here is the uh, impact on the upstream sector. Uh, now let's look at the chart on the right hand side here. Uh, as you can see that the gap between the supply and demand of this uh, offshore uh, assets and facilities like uh, jackups, semi-submersibles, dual ships is enlarging. As a result, uh, the utilization rate of these assets uh, has been decreasing and until September of this year, it has dropped to the bottom so far, below uh, 60%. So we can infer that um, at this current situation, uh, the oil majors definitely will uh, cut their CAPEX uh, budget for next year. Uh, now let's look at the OPEX, the operating expenditures. Uh, here is the day rate, the charter rate for this uh, corresponding uh, SS. Okay, like checkups, uh, its day rate dropped by 75% uh, since last year. For semi-subs, uh, the day rate dropped, around, dropped by 35% year on year. And the last one for dual ships, the day rate dropped by around 40%. So uh, here we need to point out that um, if the low oil price continue in next year, the budget, as we mentioned before, on the CAPEX 
could be dropped back to zero. However, we think that the uh, oil companies, they definitely they will reduce their um, budget for the CAPEX, but they won't uh, cut it to zero because the expenditures to reactivate the idle rigs is more costly than the expenditures are uh, on the maintenance of this uh, of this uh, SS. So probably they will renegotiate uh, with the uh, rig owners like Ezion uh, for a lower rate, but still they will maintain uh, their OPEX in next year. The next, uh, we will talk about the offshore wind farm market. So according to Global Wind Energy Outlook this year, they provide four scenarios uh, of the forecasts uh, of the wind installation capacity in the long run. So new policy scenario is the most uh, pessimistic scenario, while the advanced scenario is the most optimistic uh, scenario. As you can see that uh, the MPS, the new policy scenario, it forecasted that the growth of uh, installation capacity uh, to 2020 uh, from 2015 to 2020 will be uh, around 40, uh, 48% and for the most positive scenario this capacity will be double up uh, in the five years time. So as far as the um, offshore wind market, uh, look at the chart on the right hand side here. You can see that uh, in 2015, uh, sorry, uh, so uh, from 2015 to 2020, China will take the lead uh, in the development of offshore wind. So back to 2015, you can see that the capacity of offshore wind installation is uh, in China is less than one gigawatt. So moving forward until 2020, uh, the Bloomberg forecast that the total capacity of offshore wind installation will reach 5.2 gigawatt, which means that um, China will have the highest uh, development growth of this, this offshore wind. However, um, according to uh, the, um, uh, the government data, they failed to reach uh, the target of 5 gigawatt uh, by 2015. However, in the current 13-5 uh, year plan, it still aims to reach uh, 30 gigawatt capacity by 2020. So these are the areas that um, China will um, establish their uh, wind farm foundations and turbines. Uh, the next is the investment merits for Ezion. Here are the three reasons why we think that uh, Ezion has a positive outlook uh, in the next year. The first one is the fleet utilization. We think that the average uh, utilization rate will increase from 65% in this year to 78% in next year. As there will be five or six additional units uh, be put on operation in next year. Uh, the second point is that uh, the conversion into mobile pools as well as the redeployment in the offshore wind farm is expected to create new demand uh, to offset the uh, negative impact uh, from the current low oil environment. environment. The last one, we will talk about the uh, liquidity issues. As we see that the Ezion's uh, cash flow is improving, as well as uh, the um, debt issues uh, will be uh, mitigated in next year.
So here, the, here is the full list of uh, the ESEON's uh, total fleet size. We need to pay attention for those highlighted units. As you can see that the end day here, because these contracts, these highlighted contracts will be on due uh, in the near term like uh, end of this year or uh, first or second quarter of next year. So if the low oil price continue in next year, the rig contract, uh, the rig uh, operators or oil majors, probably they will renegotiate with uh, ESEON for a lower charter rate. However, this table uh, is based on the guidance from the management. Uh, as of September of this year, 70 out of 26 uh, units are underworking. And by end of this year or beginning of next year, there will be five or six more units that to be put on work, uh, which uh, can lift up the uh, which can enhance the um, top line. So um, here is the um, conversions and redeployment or uh, of the uh, fleets that are under upgrades and uh, construction. So service rig ten, fourteen, and fifteen will be. Converted to uh, converted into mobile pool and will be redeployed in the next two years. And all these three uh, mobile pools will be allocated into Southeast Asia region, where uh, mobile pools is far from saturations. And service rig A has been serving in North Sea for wind farm accommodation, and currently the unique. 11 and 16 have been sent to the Europe and are waiting to operate uh, in the second quarter of in next year. So for lift boat 13 and 24, these two units will be sent to China for uh, wind farm uh, development support. Um, here we need to point out is that uh, these two units are under JVs uh, between the two China state-owned companies. So we, the contract on these two units are uh, a bit different from the rest of the units because uh, forming the JV, uh, we can see that uh, Eason is building the check record uh, of uh, these uh, lift bolts. So moving forward, if uh, China issue more variable policies on the wind farm development. We have we can see uh, we can expect that Ezon uh, have more potential to win more contracts from China. Uh, the next slide we will talk about the uh, uh, liquidity issues. So uh, as of uh, June this year, the second quarter, uh, the short term looms uh, amounted to be uh, $371 million and 180 out of which will be rolled over in the next year and the remaining 91 million uh, needed to be paid off by end of this year. However, at that time the cash on hand uh, was reported at only $181 million. So if uh, uh, so at that time, uh, if the company choose to pay off all these debts, the remaining cash flows on the remaining cash on hand will be estimated to uh, will be uh, around ninety millions. However, as uh, of September of this year, the short term loans are uh, decreased by. Uh, uh, decreased to uh, 353 million and the cash on hand actually increased by uh, another 70 million to 255 million. So uh, in the third quarter, 
uh, Eason has had paid has had repaid uh, 40 millions of these uh, on due loans and they expected that uh, the remaining 51 millions will be fully paid in the fourth quarter. Uh, as the market uh, show more concerns on the bond issues uh, on these uh, oil and gas uh, companies in Singapore, as for Ezion, its notes payable outstanding is not that uh, significant. As you can see that the total amount of the notes uh, that need to be paid was uh, around 378 million. And the first that need to be paid out uh, will be on August uh, 2018, which is uh, two years from now. And the amounts uh, is only 41 million. So right now the uh, total of, uh, liabilities outstanding uh, amounted to about 1.5 billion. And uh, according to the management, Eason has been uh, negotiating with five banks to uh, conduct the debt restructuring. Uh, currently, four of these five banks have pr approved the plan and uh, they are positive that uh, eventually all these five banks will uh, approve the whole uh, debt restructuring. The next is the key assumptions and valuations for Ezion. Uh, as we knew that uh, Ezion right now is quite uh, heavily leveraged. Uh, you can see that the debt to asset ratios uh, is actually uh, above uh, 50 percent. To currently, the debt to asset uh, ratios is uh, 54 percent, and because of the, uh, the nature of the business, uh, heavily relies on the cash flow. So we decide to use uh, discounted free cash flow to firm FCF F to value easy on and based on the weighted average cost of capital of 9, 8.9% we derive our target price for next year uh, is uh, 48 cents Here is the uh, here are the investment risks. As you can see, that um, Ezion is in the upstream sector of uh, oil and gas industry, so it is highly correlated to oil price movement. But so far, um, the oil market has uh, quite a few uncertainties, uh, like the OPEC meeting, whether they can uh, reach the uh, uh, final. Uh, output agreement and whether Trump's policy will favor the domestic, uh, the US domestic uh, output. Uh, we need to uh, mark to market to see whether these uh, factors will have a uh, substantially impact on, on, will have substantial impact on the oil price movement. Uh, the next is the peer comparison table. Uh, these are the average of uh, uh, all the relative uh, valuation ratios. As you can see that uh, right now easy on compared to the uh, peers in the industry, uh, it is the ratios on average are, are below the, the peers. Now uh, let's recap the Ezion. So uh, we initiated buy call with the target price of uh, 48 cents. The next we will talk about the uh, results update on China Airpipe Water, the uh, third quarter and nine months result. 
So we maintain our buy call with the lower target price of uh, 63 cents compared with uh, the previous target price of 69 cents. So uh, it's uh, 6 cents lower. And average price last close price was uh, 52 cents. Now let's look at the financials. The revenue top line went up by uh, 30, around 39% to 1.8 billion Hong Kong dollars. This was due to the increase, uh, the substantial increase in construction services uh, from the expansion and upgrading projects. However, the gross profit it only increased by high single digit to uh, 8.3%. This was because uh, the uh, construction services is the main revenue contributor and its gross profit margin is only 21%. Compared with the, uh, the gross profit margin from operation segment, which is uh, 50%. And the operating profit uh, it went up by uh, around 12%. This was due to the uh, collection of the uh, 91 million, 91 Hong, uh, million Hong Kong dollars of uh, VAT refund, which was uh, offset by the one-off FS losses. The amount was uh, 53 million Hong Kong dollars. And the bottom line, the net profit uh, it dropped by 8.6%. This was due to the uh, increase in finance costs uh, due to uh, more borrowings in, during the period and also the increase of uh, tax expenses. As we knew that uh, uh, RMB is on the trend of depreciation, so uh, the management has already uh, realized these issues. So as of uh, September this year, the RMB denominated loans only take up 60% of 62% of the total 5 billion uh, debts. And moving forward, uh, they will plan to increase the percentage of the RMB loans uh, while to uh, while uh, they will also reduce the um, US dollar exposed uh, foreign debts. And so far, the uh, the group has secured. Uh, banking facilities amounted to RMB uh, 9.3 billion uh, which are shown here. So we need to pay attention to these uh, AAA rated Panda bonds. So according to the management, uh, this 2.5 B, the borrowing rate for this 2.5 billion bonds is quite low, uh, range from 2.5 to 4% uh, per annum. So actually, uh, the overall borrowing rate for Everbyte Water is not that high compared to the market rate. The last point is that uh, currently uh, Everbyte Water is uh, facing difficulties in in terms of the um, the wastewater treatment plant upgrades and tariffy as well as the collection of receivables. As we knew that last year it acquired Da and Dong Da and most of the projects are located in uh, Liaoning province. And year to day Liaoning province uh, GDP growth rate ranked the bottom in China and the local government now is facing uh, physical pressure. Uh, so uh, according to the management, Everbyte Water uh, is, has been uh, actively 
negotiating with the local government to uh, collect all these uh, uh, on-due receivables. However, the possible solution is that um, besides um, besides uh, um, repaying these receivables in cash, the government could possibly uh, pay by fixed access. And also, uh, the management guided that the process of the wastewater treatment plant upgrades and the original plan to lift up the uh, tariff is falling behind the schedule and in next year uh, they will continue to focus on the construction uh, segment so we can expect that uh, moving forward the uh, uh, top line will have uh, double digit growth however the um, uh, margin will be shrinking uh, due to the lower gross profit margin of the construction services. Morning everyone, this is Lin Sin. Uh, I'll be giving an update on QNM Dental. So for the third quarter, uh, they are, the top line actually increased by 27% uh, year on year. This uh, con uh, mainly contrib sorry, these are actually contributed by across the three segments: the clinics, distribution business, as well as the manufacturing side. So for clinic, uh, they are still continue to benefit from organic and in organic uh, contribution. As for their distribution uh, businesses, um, the 83% uh, growth are mainly contributed by the <coughs> acquisition of Sanyang Mao Thai, which they have acquired uh, back in January this year. As for their manufacturing side, um, after two consecutive uh, contraction sorry, after two consecutive quarters of contraction, uh, we finally see a turnaround. It grew 25% uh, year on year as of uh, third quarter. This is mainly uh, due to the increased production from the new factory. So the new uh, IDTER factory uh, currently is a uh, utilization uh, rate is at 70 to 75%. And just to recap, it actually uh, doubled its capacity to a five line, a five production line, and we continue to remain a bit on its better profitability, uh, on the back of higher capacity as well as uh, improved economies of scale. However, as you can see, that its gross margin, uh, which subsequently also weigh on its EBITDA margin, actually fell. It is mainly due to the lower margin in uh, East China, China business side coming from both distribution as well as manufacturing. Management uh, noted that there are fiercer competition in the China market as compared to in uh, Singapore. They, are, uh, they refrain from uh, in increasing uh, the price um, so that they can maintain their market share. So um, due to this, we actually lowered our assumption on our uh, gross margin moving forward. Um, however, having said that, uh, having said that, uh, it's going, uh, it's cost of uh, operation as well as its cost of good sales is going to increase and uh, weigh on its uh, overall margin. But we think that it's going to revert to its previous level after the spin-off listing of Editor as well as uh, QNM Housing. Editor is the manufacturing business side and QNM Housing is the is from the China distribution business. So after after the spin-off uh, listing of these two companies, 
the increasing cost will be less of our concern. And management shared that uh, its spin-off listing of these two companies are actually on track with IDTER to target to be listed uh, on the third new third board in China by end of this year and housing to be listed in Catalyst board by the first half of next year. So post spin-off, uh, they, they will still continue to um, have a control, controlling uh, interest of uh, 38% in editor and 40, about 44% in housing. So these slides would um, probably give you a few of what actually happened uh, in the past quarter. So uh, during our last update on September, we actually uh, uh, provide the details of uh, QNM's acquisition on three dental, uh, dental clinics, namely Tufi, whole dental surgery, and Jurong Point dental surgery. Subsequently, they acquired another uh, dental clinics at Chua Chu Kang area. Um, it's called British uh, Dentist Surgery on 4th of October. It was acquired at a, a, an implied PE of nine times. Uh, this is actually at the mid-range of their uh, targeted PE for acquisition deal. Last but not least, they have also um, labs the MOU with uh, Sunjan New Perfect Dental Research for the second time and on similar concern on future earnings uncertainties. Next, um, just to give you a view on uh, how QLM uh, Dental stands uh, as compared to its uh, regional peers. It's actually currently trading at um, a premium as compared to its uh, peers average. But if you're looking at the uh, future, sorry, the forward PE, it's actually uh, trading on par as well as if you compare its ROE, it's actually uh, quite similar to its uh, regional peers. With that, we iterate a buy call, but with a lower uh, target price of 89 cents as compared to our previous uh, target price of 93 cents. This, the adjusted uh, target price was uh, due to um, our revised uh, FY17 uh, forecasted EPS as we take into consideration of the MOU labs as well as the new revenue stream coming from the acquisition of uh, British Dental Surgery. We remain upbeat of its expanded clinics businesses, the newly acquired dental equipments and supplies uh, distribution company in China, and a turnaround in uh, manufacturing business. Having said that, uh, let me backtrack a bit. QNM Dental currently is uh, on a net debt position of about 33 million. It has 46 million cash at the moment. Uh, this could easily fund acquisition of uh, at least 18 dental outlets. Notwithstanding that, post spin off listing of uh, the two companies, it will be flush with cash, which will enable them to go on acquisition spree. And last but not least, uh, we will review our model post-successful spin-off listing of IDTER and uh, housing. But at the moment, we are still maintaining a buy call with a target price of 89 cents. With that, we have come to the end of our webinar for this week. Uh, we will now open the floor to any questions.
uh, there is a question asking about the uh, um, the pessimistic outlook of his debt and cash flow, and why we uh, maintain our uh, buy call. The reason is because uh, we can see the trend that uh, Ezion has been turning the uh, has been reducing its uh, gearing and improving its cash flow. So moving forward, uh, if uh, they can really reach the agreement that uh, both five banks approve the uh, the debt restructuring, this will mitigate its uh, liquidity issues, and they will have uh, more cash flow to maintain their current uh, current uh, conversions and uh, upgrading works. Uh, there is a question asking about how come the industry utilization rate down while the Ezion's utilization rate is up. Uh, because uh, you can see the uh, the current uh, fleet size here. So according to the management, um, five of six uh, units will be uh, redeployed in second or the in the second or in the first or second quarter next year so uh, by then it will start to collect the chapters from these uh, working units however because the uh, the company uh, is facing previously is face it was facing uh, liquidity issues that's why they delay the delivery of the units but uh, we can see that the uh, cash flow uh, will be enhanced uh, moving forward that's why we think that uh, the, the utilization rate of the total fleet actually will increase because all this contract has been uh, sealed uh, early this year or in the past year. Hi, good morning guys, Da Hong here. There's a question on REITs. Um, 
the question is with the increase in US Treasury use so recently there is a drop in S street prices is it a good time to buy into good names like Ascender Street we I wouldn't be able to comment on individual REITs such as Ascender Street because I don't cover them but then okay just a bit of uh, background so recently like this um, like this uh, Klein has correctly mentioned because post post Donald Trump win there's actually been a, a, a sharp rise in treasury use because the expectations for a rate hike is getting is getting uh, more intense because of previous comments from the president elect saying that the Fed has has been artificially keeping rates for too low for too long. So post his win, um, the expectations were climbing, and then treasury use were going up as well. And then you see U vehicles like REITs actually getting slammed pretty hard after the after his win. So prior to the correction we think that REITs were actually fairly priced. So we had a few um, neutral calls and then I think after the correction you we we need to remember that in general the macro climate is still is still very easy, very loose monetary policies across the ECB, BOJ, etc. Um, rate hikes would happen, but we think it's going to be slow. So the pace of the rate hikes would be slow. And so considering this macro backdrop that the general uh, monetar monetary policies are still loose, still a lot of cheap money, cheap money going around, when certain REITs, I think when they reach certain prices, I think it's, it's, it's good to compare them against our target price like for instance you look at FCT it was trading at two two dollars and above two dollars and ten cents we had a neutral call target price is two dollars now it's corrected to 195 so I would say value is starting to show up in some of these reads but I wouldn't be able to comment on uh, the the ascenders read that um, this uh, client has mentioned but I do think that some value is starting to show up and I think I think it's good to um, compare the prices against our target prices because we uh, we ha we may have a neutral call but then that was uh, a call when the price was trading at the old prices so now that the prices have corrected below some some of these prices may have corrected below our target price and in instances like this I do think that is a is a is a good chance to start to accumulate
Hi guys, so if there are no more questions, we will end our webinar for this week. Uh, hope to see you guys again, same time next week.